Hey guys, what I'm what I have uh, set up for you guys to watch today is a video of uh, a shoot I did with uh, this NECA eight-inch clothed uh, nun figure, and um, <clears throat> I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you guys. Uh, it, you know, it's a it's a voiceover, but and and it's sped up at two hundred percent, so I don't you know take a long time in the video, so it's it's probably about fifteen minutes. But uh, in that fifteen minutes, you're going to see me go through the process of you know adjusting little details, posing the figure, setting up the lights, using the loom cubes, using you know mono lights, uh, grids, stuff like that, lighting matches, and adding fire to the scene, and using my fog machine, just different cool little things that help build up. Uh, uh, the image you see here and the image you see here with the burning cross that's really cool or the glowing cross because if you saw the movie uh, you, you'll see that in certain parts they have that cross and it's like glowing red and uh, it's like the power of Christ compels you crosses glow red <laughs> anyway uh, but my cross glows red and I really did uh, light it on fire and um, I and it really did I caught the embers of the the you know once the flames died down uh, I caught the embers uh, and it's a glowing cross so it's really pretty cool um, but there's a lot involved in trying to get it right uh, it takes a few times uh, and if you've only got one wooden cross you have to make sure that uh, you know you're set up to get the shot when uh, you know it's time to get it and so and, and you know this it's just a fun video to show you what was involved in creating you know uh, these three images that, that I'm going to show you in the video um, this is a really cool figure I will say uh, it's the first clothed NECA figure that I've bought and I'm not a fan of buying clothed NECA figures I think but you can't go wrong with a nun and that's why I did it I mean she's an awesome figure I love that it's a nun uh, how many nun figures really are out there you know and you can use this figure in so many different kinds of ways uh, it makes it really a nice figure to have but that being said it is a beast to pose uh, she's not very articulate uh, you know in the legs she doesn't sit down um, you know her hands and, and arms and wrists and stuff articulate well um, but you her her legs are just these little tiny chicken scrawny legs and her feet bend up and down so much that it's really best and that's why I decided to go with you'll see in the video me posing her against a tree because it gave her some support there's no holes in the bottom of her feet like a lot of the NECA figure this well the seven inch figures have them but this figure doesn't so I couldn't do it the traditional way where I put like uh, wire uh, in the holes and then punch it down into the styrofoam or wooden skewers I couldn't do any of that uh, and so it made it kind of a challenge to pose so I just went with the tree uh, and you'll see that in the video and posed her up against the tree uh, but you know that being said for all the difficulty that she, that she has in trying to pose her um, and not being very articulate uh, from the you know waist down or anything um, uh, she's still an awesome figure to have um, just because it's like I say it's a nun and I've always had a, a, a cool thing for you know wicked evil nuns uh, hot wicked evil nuns she's not hot but you know her cross is <laughs> but anyway so that being said let's watch the video I hope you guys can get some cool information from it um, you know I'm gonna talk through it and tell you what I'm doing and um, you know and we'll get through this next 15 minutes of video and hopefully see at the end of the video you guys will have gotten some uh, you know sort of glean some good information from from uh, the footage that you see uh, and see she just doesn't stand up there you go uh, but hopefully at the end of the video you guys by the time it's over you'd have gotten some good information out of it oh, and I wanted to show you really cool shirts man check out my website uh, I'm not gonna tell you who this is but really cool shirts bags coffee mugs uh, you know cell phone cases all kinds of cool uh, toy photography stuff on my website go check it out uh, insightfulimagery.com uh, like and subscribe Instagram insightful underscore imagery follow me on there um, and you know I appreciate you guys and let's get to it so here I'm just trying to get into position some trees so these are just some tree branches that I've gotten uh, you know in the winter time uh, and I've just got them secured with some clips there that you can buy at Home Depot. Nothing fancy. 
uh, and I put the doll in here just trying to get a sense of the overall scene I want to create and how she's going to fit in here with these trees uh, and I use a paintbrush to you know sweep things around because it's just cleaner uh, and, and that's what I'm doing I'm just brushing back some dirt so that I can set my clips and trees uh, on the side there without them being uneven and and those clips are really handy for more than just you know trees I use them for all kinds of stuff uh, and they're, they're really nice to have but you can see here I'm taking the tree branches and I'm bending them inward sort of creating a like a uh, they're leaning into each other and then I secure them with some weights and I've just got beans and rice and these bags here then I put her in here and I'm trying to get a sense of how she's gonna look uh, in between the trees uh, you know and just kind of building up the scene in my mind seeing what's gonna look right from the camera vantage point uh, this habit that she has uh, it's nice because it has a bendy wire in it and you can pose it different ways too but I find that you have to put some tape on her head uh, to keep that habit on uh, otherwise it, it tends to fall off anyway and, and here you know I'm sweeping some dirt around and some moss and I got a big ball of that moss from some trees last winter time and dried it out and saved it it's great for all kinds of stuff man uh, you know it's a strong moss and I use it for a lot of different things um, and at any rate, so, you know, what I'm doing here, I'm just getting the figure. I think I, I've got her in my hand there, yeah. We're going to bend that uh, habit back and make it look sort of like there's a breeze blowing there. And it is kind of heavy, that that uh, head dressing. Um, and so you got to be careful with it. When you turn her head, the habit doesn't pose, you know, it doesn't turn with her. And so it, it creates kind of an awkward... Uh, you know bit of bulk and so it's good to have some tape under there uh, and here I'm just setting her up I'm giving her some support by holding on to the tree because she doesn't stand very well on her own there's no holes in her feet to secure her to the foam using some wooden skewers or wires so I've kind of kind of depend on you know these tree branches to hold her up and then here's a cross that I made uh, with some chain and hot glue and some wood wood stick uh, and I'm just kind of getting a sense of how this is going to look in her hand. And ultimately, I decide here that the chain is just too long. Uh, I just kind of fiddled with it for a little while and thought, nah, it looks stupid wrapping it around her hand. So let's just take it back off of there. And I'm going to take a few links out of there and just put it back in her hand. You know, and that's what this is. It's just a matter of going through and seeing what looks good to you. There's no real hard and fast rules to it. It's just what looks good to you, what makes your scene look good. And so I pull some links off of the chain here, and uh, I go ahead and put it back on her hand, and that's a lot better. There it is. The Christ, the cross is vibrating. The power of Christ is compelling it to move. Uh, no, anyway. Um, so <laughs> here... Uh, this is this next part I'm going into and I've got a loop cube here I'm gonna go into setting up some of my lighting uh, I've put a red gel on this and just some blue low tack masking tape and I'm gonna fiddle with that for a second until I get it right because I don't have the gel adapter <laughs> but blue masking tape works great man then I'm gonna use a, a chair from a dollhouse to give it some elevation, put it behind the moss, spread the moss out a little bit to make it less dense and the light pass through it easier. Uh, now I've got another loom cube with a snoot and I'm going to put it camera right, which would be the nun's left, and that's just going to add some fill light to her face. Uh, you don't see the main light now up above, but I'll show you in a minute. And I'm just going through and moving stuff around and just kind of tweaking and fiddling and just making sure that things are are nice I'm in no particular hurry you know I'm just having fun with my set uh, and getting ready to go taking pictures here we go so I move the camera the, the GoPro back a little bit so you can see more of the scene uh, right now I'm gonna plug in my fog machine and behind the moss I added two panels there you're not gonna really see them they're just gonna offer a little contrast behind there instead of just pure black seamless roll paper they're gonna be blurred out but anyway uh, 
So, and there's Chucky up on top of the, the fog machine. He's just holding it down for me. That's another cool NECA figure. You can see my main light on top. It's a uh, gridded um, light, and there's a blue gel in there, and that's Explore 600 on a C-stand, and that's just going to offer me some overhead blue ambient lighting, like moonlight. She's out in the woods, and uh, it's sort of a surreal effect. I'm turning it on right now. <clears throat> and pointing my big ass at the screen. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna turn my lights off and I'm gonna turn my modeling light on here in a second so you'll be able to see kind of what it looks like. There we go. See, there's my modeling light on. It's throwing a little blue light onto the scene. I'm just positioning the light right now. I'm gonna feather the light. I don't want it directly overhead of her. Uh, I want more of the blue to fall behind her so that when I light her with my uh, fill lights that I get more of the non-blue fill light on her face and the orange light from the fire that's going to be there. So that's what I do here. Now I've got my phone in my hand and I'm going to turn on my Loom Cubes uh, using their super cool handy app. And you'll see me here with my phone. I just turned the Loom Cubes on. You can see the red gelled behind uh, the moss and I'm increasing or decreasing the brightness of it from my phone and so that's a really handy feature to have uh, I do I do like the loom cubes in that regard they do get really stinking hot I, I mean if you leave them on full power those things get hot uh, but anyway I just you know I, I, I love the the features of being able to control them independently from your phone and not have to go back and forth and touch them to turn them up or down if you're pushing the buttons so I do like that at any rate, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to look through the viewfinder here and I'm going to just look at the scene through my camera because it always looks one way as you're setting it up and then it looks a different way through the viewfinder. But ultimately what matters is how it looks to the viewfinder because we're going to capture an image. Uh, so I'm going to look through here, grab some focus, uh, make sure that there's nothing I need to adjust and there usually always is something I need to adjust I get back up and I go fiddle with stuff again um, I think I'm turning my modeling light off here let's see what I'm doing I'm just recalling this from memory and talking back through it as I watch the video with you guys uh, so at, at any rate I think I'm just adjusting something there on the set that bothered me perhaps uh, some tree branches or something like that uh, little things tend to bug me that I see through the viewfinder that, that I don't see as I'm standing over the set. You know, tree branches obscuring a part of her hood or something, you know, a little detail that I don't like. So here we go. Turn the lights back off. Uh, and you can see I have my studio really dark because I'm, I, I, need, I need to be able to control the light hitting the scene. I only want the light hitting the scene that I put on the scene. Nothing creeping under my doorways or no lights creeping through the windows, things like that. I want to make sure that the only light present on this scene is what I put on there. Let there be light. The power of Christ. Uh, okay, there's some light now. Anyway, so here I'm re-feathering my, my main light over top. And, and what I mean by feathering it is I'm just moving it further toward the back so that the beam of light hits less of the nun and more of the scene behind her. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, I, I, like I said, I don't want so much blue light on top of her because I've got other light sources that are going to illuminate her. And her. <laughs> uh, they're going to illuminate her. So I want to make sure that I don't have to have all kinds of different colored light sources falling on her. Uh, the blue light from above, the orange light from the matches, the light from the fill lights. So I, I move that blue gelled light, I feather it and, and let it fall on the scene behind her and I'll light her with something else. I'll light her with the matches and with the with the uh, loom cube, uh, the snooted loom cube on camera right. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to adjust my settings on the phone. And that's what this is. It's a lot of adjusting and tweaking and and, you know, setting this up to get exactly the way you want it. Taking the picture is easy. You push the dang button. <laughs> it's everything that goes up to that point that, that makes the, the actual photograph. The, the picture part is simple. You know, you push the button and it takes, takes the photo. Uh, and, and that's really quick. 
you know, but it, you really got to have an understanding of how to set your lights and create a little scene and just have fun with it and let your imagination take you away. Here I fired a shot and I'm just kind of looking at the blue light and scrolling around through here, making sure that it, it looks good the way I want it, uh, not so strong on her. And then I'm looking at that red light behind also, making sure that my shutter speed is slow enough that it's soaking up some of that red light. And I'm probably using a three second shutter speed here. Uh, there I'm turning up my loom cube in the back. Uh, and as that red light passes through the algae, it creates this sort of fiery bush or fire in the distance look. And, and, and that's what I really liked about that, using that moss back there. Uh, you know, it, it just really breaks up that red light into something that your eyes can't really tell what it is. And you end up thinking it's kind of fire, you know. And um, so here we go. Now this is, I'm lighting these matches. Uh, this is this is tough. I put them in the foam. I've got to light the matches. I've got to run back here, turn the light off, take the shot, and go back up here and blow the matches out <laughs> before they burn everything up. So now what I want to do is I want to look and see that I got that shot that I, that I like the way it looks. That it's the matches aren't too bright and, and blowing everything out, but that there's a good amount of orange in there. Um, that the red light in the back looks good. The blue light over the top looks good. The, the fill light on her face from the loom cube that has a snoot on it looks good. Uh, and, you know, if the lights from the matches aren't bright enough, I'm going to go ahead and put two matches in each position. And that's what I ended up doing. I just ended up using two matches. So I went over here and I reset them into the foam. And uh, I'm going to repeat the process until I get what I want. Until the orange is bright enough as a light source that I get some good uh, amount, a good amount of scene recorded from from that light. And, and, and that's what it is. It's just some trial and error and, you know, uh, doing it until you get it right. So I'm going to put up on the screen here uh, this, some behind the scenes kind of footage so you guys can see how these images look. You know, this is kind of a funny one here. It's uh, me just trying to get the right exposure for the, the matchstick on her face, you know, and that's what it is about. It's about taking test shots. It's about making sure that, you know, lights are bright enough and going through and doing it again, you know. Uh, here's another one that I'm actually going to edit this one. I really like it. It's uh, my flash didn't go off over the top and the whole scene is lit just by the match and the red gel in the back. <laughs> I really like that picture, even though it was a mistake. I, I really kind of like the way it came out. Uh, here's another one, the final image on the left and the original out of the camera on the right. This gives you guys a sense of, of what these images look like out of the camera. <clears throat> you know, you can look and see on the, on the unedited version, her face is a little dark, um, but in the version on the left, I've gone and taken and made her face look like it's glowing from the light of the burning cross. Uh, you know, I've added some more fog into the upper right corner of the frame, uh, and I've adjusted the color temp just a little bit for the scene. But anyway, it gives you guys an idea of, of, of how it kind of works and how it kind of looks out of the camera and stuff like that. And here I'm just going back through, lighting some matches, trying to get the scene right uh, and balance everything out the right way and go back and look at it through my camera and, you know, just, just have fun with this, man. It's, it's, it's a process that is more than just putting a doll in front of the camera and, uh, you know, throwing some sticks in there and taking photos. I mean, there is a process to it and there's people who are way better at it than me and uh you know and and it's just don't worry about where you're at with it just just stay with it and be with it and enjoy it and have a good time with this uh don't measure yourself against other people just you know the way i kind of see it is like hey man that's a really cool picture how do they do that let me try to incorporate some of those uh ideas into my imagery you know and i tr try to do that everybody's process might be a little bit different uh, at the end of the day you know you want the scene to come out the way you want it you don't want to end up with just like oh hey this is a cool picture i can't duplicate it how did i get there i got lucky you want to understand your process
You want to understand how you did it so that you can do it again and have a good time. Look at that. I just showed you that picture. I'm happy with it. We're cool, man. Uh, I'm going to clear all the smoke out. It's smoky and foggy and it's a mess in there. <laughs> but I had a good time, you know, and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm dancing. Who knows? Unplug the fog machine and, uh, you know, I'm going to call this a day and I'll put up those images again so that you can see them. And this is it, man. Thank you guys for watching.